This is Kharkiv, Ukraine's second largest city, and behind me is the city hall, which was bombed at the start of the war. Kharkiv is again under attack from the Russians who have massed at the border 25 miles away. This city is being bombed night and day at the moment by missiles, by drones and by aerial gliders, the latest weaponry being used by Vladimir Putin's war machine. Just to the northeast are the villages on the outskirts of Lipsy and Vovchansk, which is constantly being bombarded by the Russians. There are concerns tonight amongst the Ukrainians that Vovchansk will become the latest Bakhmut. You remember that city was bombed and levelled to the ground by the Russians last year during another summer offensive. That is what lies ahead in the weeks and the months ahead. There is, however, concern that the Russians will begin to push further towards this city, towards Kharkiv, in an attempt to try and capture it. Military observers have commented that there are only 50,000 Russian troops on the border and that might not be enough for Vladimir Putin to take this region. However, he can score a big political and military victory by bombarding it from the air with artillery and drones. He doesn't necessarily have to put the boots on the ground. Today, Kharkiv has come under attack yet again by more missiles and glider bombs. They've targeted residential areas and killing five and injuring 16. This is only going to increase in the coming days. He has told his supporters back home that everything is going according to plan. The head of the military administration here in Kharkiv put it very simply this evening in stark terms. He said, at present, the enemy's advance in the Kharkiv and Kupian directions has been stopped. But I ask everyone who is in the frontline communities not to wait and to evacuate. This city represents the newest front line in Ukraine's war with Russia. And it has only opened up because Russia has seized an opportunity it's seized upon the lack of willpower, as President Zelensky says it, of Western leaders to supply military aid. The US delayed and dithered over their military aid package, which provided Vladimir Putin with this window of opportunity in which to launch his troops further over the border into Ukraine. And this is where we find ourselves today. Ukraine, however, is hitting back. They've launched a number of drones towards the Crimean Peninsula and they've sunk one of the ships, a minesweeper of the Black Sea Fleet. The situation on the ground is finely balanced in that um, we have seen during the course of this year the initiative at the strategic to tactical level um, moving back to Russia. One of the crucial advantages in the Battle of Kharkiv is the Russian forces are forming up about 40 kilometers from Kharkiv in Russia. So they were able to organize themselves, concentrate mass in safety because Ukraine could see them but wasn't allowed to fire at them. Mm. And, and the, so the distances are, are, are really short. And we know what the Russian strategy is, which is to um, break the Ukrainian military, to separate it from Western support. That's about the supply of arms and, and equipment. To eject the government or remove the government in Kiev in Kiev and replace it with a Russian supporter. Um, to occupy the oblast that it claims to have annexed, and crucially, in there is obviously Crimea and the land bridge through Mariupol. Um, and its stretch objective is Kharkiv, and its stretch stretch objective is Odessa, still, which isolates the Ukrainian economy and essentially cripples it. Um, you know, in terms of its functioning logistics. So Putin has smelt weakness in Ukraine. He has smelt um, vacillation in the West. He's pretty confident that, if, that Trump's going to win and, and then that's a decisive play on turning off support. Um, and he has dialed up for a summer offensive. We are seeing, we are, we, we are seeing the um first moves in that so um there was the pressure in the donbass so taking territory slowly in the east in a way the ukrainians can't stop until they get more ammunition then secondly the assault in kharkiv which um 
could be for one of a number of reasons. It might be because they really think they can get there. And it, it's, it was once a capital of Ukraine. It's a, big, it's a big prize. But secondly, Ukraine can't afford to lose Kharkiv. So it's going to have to shift ammunition and reserve mm -hmm. as it has to protect Kharkiv. That weakens the Donbass. The, the NATO analysis has tended to be that the Russian machinery, um, whilst bigger, is not good enough to break the Ukrainian, a competent Ukrainian defense. There's a lot of effort going into in, in, into that. And, and as you know, if you're on the defense, you should be able to see off an attacker that's three to five times bigger than you are. If you're, if you're well prepared and you've got enough ammunition and you're resilient enough. Whereas when Ukraine goes on the fence, the ratio goes back the other way, which is why the counteroffensive is so difficult. So, so NATO, uh, quite confidently believes that Russia will not break through, that it will take more territory. Um, but it won't break the Ukrainian line and it won't get to Kyiv and it won't take Kharkiv. And then, the, and then, then that Russia will have shot its bolt by next year when that stock of equipment has been used and a lot of people have become casualties. I mean, it's taking 800 casualties a day, killed, wounded and missing. That's a huge uh, number. And that all NATO, all the West is just keep supplying Ukraine while Ukraine finds more people to fight, we'll come back to that. Um, and, uh, and the supply of military aid ramps up. In particular, that Europe picks up the slack if the US walks away. For all that it is still not the most likely outcome, it is the most dangerous outcome, that Russian forces have cracked through the Ukrainian defense and they are moving towards the Dnieper River or 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 turning back up to, to Kyiv. And when that happens, Ukraine won't have much left in the locker. 